It was a good start to conference play for K-State. They take down UCF by a score of 77-52, to a pretty significant step in the right direction for the Wildcats, given the way the non-conference went. Look, they were 10-3 and after non-con play, but that doesn't mean that it was pretty or that it should have felt good or anything like that. K-State came out and started in a really good spot from this game. I think the most important thing they did was get Tyler Perry an early look, and part of that is Tyler Perry's own doing, getting himself that look. I think that's a major part of this game. So let's break down this 77-52 to win for the Wildcats real quick. I'm Mason Vogt from K-State Online. Uh, in the final day of my COVID isolation or whatever thing that I'm having to do uh, after I return from the Pop-Tarts Bowl with COVID uh, and just spent you know a bunch of time camped out in my basement. So lots of time to dissect the Cats. Lots of time on Tuesday night to be pretty frustrated and a little alarmed at what we saw and how they played against Chicago State. It felt like that game was just exactly what we'd seen all season long where, man, there's a, a couple of stretches where this team really looks like there's something there, but just not enough overall to make you feel good. Really, this entire game for K-State, there are some things that can nitpick, and as many of you know, I can be the most nitpicky person of all time. I can have a really easy time finding things not to like. There was a lot more of good that happened in this game, and honestly, um, even though I'll probably still end up at the very end being the guy that uh, douses some, some water on everybody's fire, I do think that this is a, a pretty significant step for K-State. First up, Tyler Perry, we got to talk about him. Massive night for the North Texas transfer, 25 points for Perry. And most of all, it was that he got it going from three. At the end of the day, I, I don't care what the final scoring number looks like for Tyler Perry. His biggest asset to this team is if he's coming through from three-point range, and he did that tonight. And it all started with the first look of the game that he got that I alluded to when, when I started this up. He caught the ball. Didn't think, just confidently let it go. And I think that is the most important thing about getting Tyler Perry ready and going where K-State needs him this season. I, I wrote about it in the pick and preview this week. I, I think it is it is probably the most paramount thing that they can do is get him to not only make some shots, but it's got to be confident because that's how you get these shots to go. If you look at how he had kind of played at various points this year, he, it wasn't like I think he was conscious of looking for his shot, but it wasn't necessarily that he was going out and making things happen. Now there's a lot less thinking with what took place today, and we saw that with the first shot. And before he went on his run where he just lit it up, I think it was like 17.45. K-State, it was nice ball movement. I, I think everybody would probably appreciate that if it had ended with a strong score or whatever. Instead, it ended with a turnover. But he passed up what looked like a wide-open straightaway three and I made a mental note of that, and I thought to myself, all right, 1745, like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. And who knows if it was Tyler Perry himself who it registered in his head in that moment, like, oh, no, I just wasted one right there. Like, I, I, I screwed the pooch. Or if Jerome Tang, somebody else got into his head and was like, hey, fire those. We need those. And from that point forward, there was little thinking that went on with what Tyler Perry did shooting the basketball against UCF, and we saw – Kind of what Jerome Tang had alluded to at points. Like, this guy can be the best shooter in America if he just isn't thinking. If he goes out and plays basketball. I think so many times, like, the simplest way to put sports is if you just go out and do something as opposed to think about it, you're in good shape. Now, that doesn't mean you get to go out and play without using your head and being smart on the basketball court or really anything. But you do need to have a lot more of that instinct as opposed to an approach of, oh, do I do this? Do I not? Don't overthink things. Just go out and play. Tyler Perry did that tonight with his 6 of 11 from 3 and 25 points. Another big note for K-State in this game, I mean, David Gasson offensively, you're going to get a very mixed bag when it comes to what he provides, but the defensive rebounding for him has been a very steady thing. that You can start to count on a high number of rebounds from Gasson, and if he is able to add just a little bit more uh, quality execution to the offensive side, that's going to be a good thing for him. I think early on in the game, we saw one of the areas where K-State is still going to lack is he and Will McNair, they will both struggle at times when you get them the basketball. 
But McNair kind of redeemed it later in the game. He was pretty efficient, scored into double figures. And David Gasson, sometimes he's going to be on. He's going to get the looks that you need. Other times, yeah, he's going to fumble the ball down there. He's going to do some frustrating things. But he is at least grabbing boards from you, and that is necessary for the way K-State has played. Another big part of this game for K-State is the fact that the defense continues to look really solid. You can question K-State's offense, as, as we all know that I have over the last you know 13 games, I guess, prior to this one. You really can't question the defense, and they totally backed that up against UCF tonight with the way that they played. I mean, the defense is of a quality to which you can say that is, without a doubt, an NCAA tournament type of defense. The biggest question for K-State is going to be, is the offense going to be able to meet it? This is a K-State team that right now, the way the defense is playing, in my eyes, you, you don't even need average offense. You need just slightly below average offense, and you can make good things happen. You can win enough basketball games to get into the NCAA tournament. Another thing that is going to hurt K-State, and also when you play tougher competition, because look, UCF, technically we got to call them a power conference team right now. They are not a power conference team. That is very apparent in the way that they play. They are, in all likelihood, the worst team in the Big 12 this season. But you're going to play tougher teams. Is it sustainable for K-State to play only seven guys in their rotation, which is what went down against UCF tonight? Worked against the Knights. It works when you're getting somebody like Tyler Perry stroking it from deep. But are you going to be able to do that, or are you going to need more depth, especially when you are so reliant on playing good defense? I think entering tonight, they were top 40 in Kimpom and defensive efficiency. Um, they had a good defensive night this evening. They held UCF to under 25% from three. They were under 35% from the field. The numbers were even worse in the first half. Um, and that was even without forcing the, like a crazy high number of turnovers. UCF only turned it over 13 times. So a pretty significant, the K-State defense is big, but the depth might hold that back at different points this season. And for as down and negative as some people have probably thought that I've been about K-State and where they are this year, um, and I'm not running from that. I still think you know there are a lot of flaws that can smack you in the face with this team, and this might be a fan base and a group that needs a dose of reality for it a little bit. But the depth is a serious thing that has detracted from what K-State can be. And a chunk of that, like, it's to no fault of their own. I mean, yeah, you can say some guys aren't what we anticipated, um, that's probably true, but you're also you also got to remember you're you're asking more than what you really should out of a guy like Day Day Ames or any of the other freshmen for that matter. You're probably banking on getting a little bit more than what you really should have from you know a guy like Jarrell Colbert or Taj Manning or whatever. Like they're they're not going to do much for you, but losing Quez Glover like you have to injury that's just a horrible horrible break because as we've talked about at length, whether it's me and D.Y. on the KSO show or fan or anybody else that, that's talking K-State with you, if they've paid attention to this. We know that K-State, the offense has worked better primarily when Day Day Ames is on the floor. But Day Day Ames is still playing like a true freshman. It, it, he struggles at times. He struggles to the point where Jerome Tang cannot keep him on the floor constantly, but they have no other options at that position. That's where Quez Glover really would have helped you. I mean, we haven't gotten to see Quez Glover in a real game for K-State yet. And by the way, Jerome Tang talked about it this week. There's a real chance that we never see Quez Glover in a real game for K-State. So that's a brutal blow for the Wildcats. Then in addition to that, yes, we, we have to mention at least the Naquan Tomlin thing. Look, some people are much higher on Naquan Tomlin uh, and what he could have brought this year to K-State than I am. Obviously, he's a really talented player, but I do question, like, does he elevate to the role that they need for him against this competition consistently? That's a debate for another time, though. What we can say is that, without a doubt, Naquan Tomlin would easily be at least one of the three best players on this team. And with him, you do have depth. You have versatility into where you're probably not having to play so many lineups that include one guy that you feel like might do something for you offensively and four guys that like, Ugh, I don't know where it's coming from. This is going to look gross for a couple minutes while some dudes catch their breath. So the depth is going to be a, a hampering spot for K-State moving forward this season. And I think most people know that, but even in a win by 25 points tonight where you dominate, I think it more than others can just put it into perspective that much that, yeah, K-State has seven guys or at least a collective seven that played quite a bit tonight that they were able to make some things happen. But 
if you're not going to be able to get enough breathers and these games are going to start coming hot and heavy, it's going to make things really tough. Good news for K-State is they have it, They have until Tuesday now uh, for the game at West Virginia. Then you get a long, you know, kind of uh, break between the game with West Virginia and Texas Tech, but those are going to be some grueling games both on the road. And then you have to worry about when you get into Big 12 play and you start having Saturday, Monday turnarounds or you've played four straight weeks and there's a lot to consider there. The next thing that I think needs to kind of be thought about with this K-State team and the way that, uh, you know, the things have kind of gone on. This was a major step forward for them. The confidence was there. The energy was there. I, this was a team that at no point in the game did it look like they really lacked any motivation. And that's something that you could seriously question at different points uh, throughout non-conference play and really against uh, a number of different opponents. So pretty impressive what they were able to do there and how they came through. I'm going to need to get some more data points, though, to believe that this is what the real K-State basketball team moving forward is. Because the team that played tonight, yes, I, I started this by saying UCF is probably the worst team in the Big 12. But the team that played tonight, they are capable of winning enough games in the Big 12 to get you into the NCAA tournament and being competitive with a lot of teams that you put on the floor, especially if they're going to have to come play you in Bramlage Coliseum. But I need more data points to show that this is a real thing, and this is something to be taken serious moving forward. And the good news for K-State is you get a really good opportunity again on Tuesday night against West Virginia to kind of ease yourself into the flow of this and get everybody to start to see, okay, this is the real thing. Because if K-State is the caliber of team that can get in the NCAA tournament, they should be able to beat a team like West Virginia, even though it's on the road, even though West Virginia has some guys back. West Virginia's played bad this season. They finally got some of their players back. I thought that after they you know, battled tightly with Ohio State uh, last week or two weeks ago that, okay, this is a different team. That record is not indicative of what they are. Then they showed up and they got blasted by Houston today. And look, Houston's a really good team. I don't think Houston should be 30 points better than any version of West Virginia that sees the floor. So uh, K-State needs to go out and win on Tuesday in Morgantown, show some of the improved elements that we saw in this game against UCF, and then it'll be easy to start to buy in a little bit more. One other thing to highlight in this game, these are just some numbers that I think are important and, and good to note for K-State. They had four pretty significant runs over the course of this game. Everybody knows they started out with a 12-0 lead, so 12-0 right there. They had 9-0 runs in little spurts there in the middle, and then they had a big a big one where they went 22-4, and within that they even had a stretch where they outscored UCF 13-0. So that is a highlight of what the defense can do, and when the offense is, is giving you something, like Tyler Perry or Arthur Kaluma had a good burst early in the game. Will McNair gave you some moments. When you are getting that, that's how you're going to win these games. I mean, that you can look at how the Big 12 plays out. It's a game of runs. That's basketball in general. But if you have the ability to hold a team down for a little bit, get yourself a cushion or get back into a game, that's how you find ways to win in this league. K-State did it tonight, albeit against a really bad team. But there are there is a lot of reasons now to be positive again about K-State. This has been a season that has just been up, down, up, down, up, down. Like it's, it's after that USC game going into it, even though they lost, I was like, yeah, there's, there's more reason to be optimistic about this team than originally considered. Then the season wore on and you start to get down. And again, it's like, Oh, like this is not looking good. They draw you back in with the Villanova game. And then they go and house LSU on the road. You think, okay, now this team has flipped it. We're ready to go. And again, they finished non-con, even though they you know, got the wins against Wichita State and Chicago State. They were ugly. They did not make you feel good. And now this team's back, you know, taking that roller coaster up. Uh, and the hope would be that you're, you're almost to the end of the roller coaster and you're ready to just kind of steady out and get your way through the next 18 games on your schedule uh, with 17 left in the regular season and one at least in Kansas City. But Overall, a good night for K-State. They are now 11-3, and 1-0 and in Big 12 play. Just think of it this way. If they get at least eight more wins, they're probably in the NCAA tournament. That would probably put you in a pretty safe spot. Um, anything other than that, they're going to be scratching and clawing. We'll see how it goes from there. They're on the road Tuesday night in Morgantown to take on West Virginia. Uh, also, shout out to the K-State women, the number 11 team in the country. They also got a big win against UCF today. Theirs was down in Orlando. So the Knights have been victimized by K-State plenty today. Uh, so I just, you know, 
be nice to them uh, online because they're probably really rethinking the whole Big 12 thing. It's not been nice to them, and UCF has 17 more games like this. And uh, don't worry, Knights, it gets a lot easier. KU comes to town on Wednesday. So that will do it for me here at K-State Online this evening. We will be back tomorrow over on the K-State Online YouTube page and our podcast platforms as well as we are going to have the full you know, recap of the game, talk basketball at length as Big 12 play starts with the Sunday show, myself, Drew Galloway, and KSU underscore fan. And then we'll have content all throughout the week. Uh, I believe DY will be in Morgantown unless something has changed to my knowledge. So we will have boots on the ground in West Virginia this week for the Wildcats as they try to take down the Mountaineers. So K-State wins it tonight, 77-52. They take down UCF, a good one for the Wildcats. Thank you for watching and listening. KSO.